morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I wanted to do today was I want to embark on a new series of videos that is going to be different than anything I've ever done because it's going to be more focused on how I can go lighter with my load, how I can go lighter with my load of what I'm carrying without sacrificing a lot of the comforts that I'd like to have in a camp. Obviously, you know, I do this stuff all the time. I ruck all the time. I teach all the time. So I'm walking all the time with gear. And a 50 to 60 pound load is doable. A 40 pound load over a distance of 12, 14 K is not a problem. However, there's a difference between can I do it and do I want to do it? Because your comfort level when you're out enjoying and recreating in the woods is directly related to your experience. So if you are comfortable and things aren't stressful on you when you're walking and your load doesn't feel heavy and it feels very easy to carry, you're going to enjoy the experience more. You're going to be able to see more. You're going to be able to walk further. You're going to be able to walk longer. You're going to have to take less breaks. All those types of things are important when it comes to enjoying the outdoors. And really, that's what we're out here for in all actuality. So what I wanted to look at was in this series, I want to kind of go back in the shadow of Nesmic for lack of a better uh, ideology or lack of a better comparison. And Nesmic was a very ultra light guy way before his time. He looked at everything as far as how much does it weigh, how much can it do for me, and do I really need this when I am traveling through the wilderness? And so what I'm trying to do as a hunter, as a trapper, as a fisherman, what I'm looking at now is how can I set up a carryable system that I can camp and hunt, do a roving type hunt if I want to, camping in a different spot every night over some type of distance and not sacrifice the comfort that I'd like to have to have a more enjoyable trip and still be able to pack the stuff up, carry it around, do what I have to do, have a good time, and then at night be comfortable. And so I think that's what Nesmic was really all about. And, you know, he's got some incredible weights attached to some of the things in his book. And I think you have to take some of that with a grain of salt because I think there are some things that aren't translated correctly or maybe not written in a format that they're truly understandable with some of the weights of the gear he talks about, especially things like his ditty bag that has hooks and sinkers and wire snells and all these things. And he talks about it only weighing two ounces. I believe that the pouch he keeps it in only weighs two ounces, but I don't believe that everything inside the pouch and the pouch weighs two ounces. So I think maybe that was... And it's probably not that he was intentionally trying to fool people. It's probably the way it was written and the way we understand it today versus the way it was written back then and people understood it that are different because things get lost in that translation over time. However, that's all inc inconsequential to this conversation. So how am I going to go about doing this and what's my, what's my goal? That's important. What's your goal going into this. And for me, every time I'm trying to learn something new or have a new experience, I start off with a goal. And so I looked at this as my goal is to be able to reduce the base weight of what I'm going to carry in a hunting pack for camping, for backpacking in and camping on a hunting trip, whether it is in this 4,000 acres or whether it's somewhere else that I want to go. What am I trying to achieve? Well, what I'm trying to achieve is a base weight. In other words, without my ammunition, without my food, without my gun, without my fishing rods, just the base camp gear that I need, I want that to be less than 25 pounds. That way, when I add the other things to it, hopefully I can keep it under 40 pounds. And that's a lot to ask because a lot of this gear has a lot of weight to it. And that's where the ultra light stuff comes in. That's where you try to reduce the weight of those base items so that you can carry the peripherals like food, like water, that are going to add weight that you really can't do a whole lot about. Water weighs eight pounds a gallon. There's nothing you can do about that. You, most of the time, you're going to have to carry one to two liters. Sometimes you're going to have to carry more if you're in areas where water is spread out over distance. You're not going to be able to get to water to disinfect it for consumption. So you're going to carry a minimum of four pounds of water. You're probably going to carry two pounds-ish of food per day. So if you're planning on being gone three days, there's another six pounds. So you've added 10 pounds to your pack 
pretty much just in the food and water immediately. So if you start with 25, you're at 35. And that's before you add any ammunition. That's before you add a gun. That's before you add any optics you may be wanting to take. That's before you add anything to maintain that weapon over time. So you're going to add that weight on very quickly. So starting with a low base weight for this particular concept is very important to me. How do I do that? Well, how I did that was I went and I looked at ultralight through hikers. Yes, Dave Canterbury just said the word ultralight and through hikers in the same sentence. And I know that's something that probably people never thought they'd hear come out of my mouth. But if that allows me to meet the end goal, then I need to figure out how to work around that and what's going to work for me and what's not going to work for me. It doesn't mean it's going to work for you. It doesn't mean that it's going to be affordable for you because with this ultralight gear comes a high price. There's really nothing you can do about that. And even if you make it yourself, just to buy the fabric of some of this ultralight material is quite expensive as well. You can save some cost that way, but it's still going to be more expensive than buying surplus or traditional type gear for the most part. And let's not confuse the term common man with common sense here, okay? Because common man doesn't mean homeless. It doesn't mean jobless. It doesn't mean struggling to put food on the table for my family. It means that I have enough common sense and I have enough of an understanding that I'm going to buy the best quality gear I can afford. I'm going to buy what I need to do the, to meet the end goal. And I'm going to be frugal with the money as far as how I spend it to buy the right gear with that money so that whatever budget I set aside is going to meet that end goal. That's common man to me to buy the best quality gear that I can afford and upgrade as I go or as I can. And it's the same mentality Nesmic had, the same mentality Kephart had, and both of them, I would consider them very common men. And I would consider myself a common man because I still have to provide for a family. I still have to feed my wife and my kids. I still have to put a roof over their head. I still have to have cars to drive. I still have to pay bills. That's common man. So Understanding that going in, there's going to be some cost associated with this, and I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying to say you should go out and buy this because I'm carrying it. That's not what I'm saying. What I want to do with this series is show you my experimentation and my mentality behind what I'm doing, and hopefully you can discern something from that for the future for yourself. So let's start off with how I began to keep this video fairly short, okay? The first thing I looked at is I went through and I watched a lot of ultralight hikers videos. I watched Darwin on the trail. I watched Bigfoot. I watched a lot of these guys to see what are these guys carrying because an ultralight hiker that walks the Appalachian Trail and is out there for 120 days, and yes, they can stop at towns and resupply and buy new gear and stay at hostels and hotels whenever they want to every two or three or four days. No question about any of that. But they're still on the trail for probably 100 to 120 days. They're still taking their camp up and down every night, and they're still packing and repacking that gear and setting up at different locations every night. So if you look at the gear they're carrying, it probably has to be fairly durable or they wouldn't be carrying it because they destroy it every other day with what they're doing. So that's the first thing I looked at. So looking at that mentality, most of what hikers look at to begin with when they're trying to reduce what they call the base weight of their gear is what they call the big three. Their pack, their sleep system, and their tent. All right? Those things, if you can reduce the weight of those things, a lot of the other things will kind of take care of themselves and not add so much weight to your pack until you get into the realm of food and water. So the biggest problem I found with that is the pack itself. Most of your through hikers are walking on trails that are fairly clear. Hundreds and thousands of people have walked on these trails constantly year after year after year. So they're not busting brush. When you're in a hunting scenario, you're going to be busting some brush. And with that lighter weight material, you sacrifice some durability. How much? I can't say because I have not experimented with it all yet, but I know you sacrifice some durability. That's just my personal mentality. So the pack is the problem in that big three for me. Most of those packs they use, whether it is a Z-Pack or many of the other brands that are out there, and I don't even know them all off the top of my head yet, but most of them weigh in at a pound or less, 
well under two pounds for sure, but they're made from ultralight fabrics that may not have the durability to be able to be rubbed through thorns and, and briars and through thickets and things like that without tearing them up. So I understand going in that I'm going to need a heavier pack, and that's going to add to my base weight of those big three items, which I would say the goal for that is to be under 10 pounds, in my personal opinion. I would say they probably go for under six to eight pounds, probably less than that in some cases. Some of those guys get really extreme with that. So <laughs> back to the conversation. I can go with a Z-Pax duplex tent, which we'll talk about later on in videos. 26 ounces for this tent. Way under two pounds, no problem with titanium stakes, carbon poles. The thing is lightweight to the bone. I can go with a sleep system of a down quilt from hammockgear.com and a thermorest pad that's got a good R value and keep that portion of things well under a pound and a half. So if I can get a pack that is less than five pounds, I can still get to that less than 10 pound weight for what I'm looking for for those three items. What I'm using currently is the Fial Raven uh, Free Lift, I believe is how you pronounce it. It's a 45 liter hunting pack. It's designed for hunting. You can carry a rifle or a shotgun in it behind a secondary pack that you can take off for scouting, leave the main pack back at camp. It has a bird bag. It has a camouflage rain cover that's an orange, hunter's orange. It has lots of features on it like that that are set up for hunting. It has cartridge holders in the belt pouches for the waist belt. And again, we can go over that later as well, but it's a four pound pack. So looking at that, looking at a four pound pack, looking at a sleep system that weighs, let's just say two pound for good round numbers, I'm not such a weight weenie at this point that I want to weigh things in grams yet. I'll probably get to that before it's over with. We'll see. Hopefully not. So four pounds here, two pounds for the tent, two pounds for the sleep system. That puts me at that 10 pound mark. I'm sure it's well under that and probably closer to eight all said and done. But for round numbers, we'll say it's 10 pounds. Now I can start to begin to add peripheral items that are going to bring me up to that less than 20 pound base weight and that should be fairly easy with modern materials cook things that cook implements that are made from titanium you know very few items for first aid repair small kits that will take care of most of those things all of those things added in are going to add that weight up but i'm still going to try to keep it under 20 pounds so this video really is only to tell you what the mentality going in for me is how I've kind of achieved that first big three goal. And I'm not reviewing any of these items. I'm not showing a lot about these items yet. We'll get to some of that in later videos, but I wanted to open this series with what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to walk in the shadow of Nesmic. I'm trying to get an ultralight hunting camp that's going to weigh in at 25 pounds or less, all said and done. I'd like to get that 25 pounds to include food and water if that's possible. It's not going to include ammo, gun, and things of that nature, optics, but it will be all inclusive of what it takes to camp at 25 pounds when it's all said and done, if I can get there. That's a big if for me, but we'll see if I can get to that 25 pound base weight. So that gives you my goal. It gives you the historical reference I'm looking at to try to stay within that uh, ideology of learning for me from history by learning from people like Nesmic. And then it also gives you a look at what I'm doing in the modern 21st century to achieve those goals. And we're going to look at all of this stuff little by little as we go. I just wanted to introduce the series today, which I'm going to call In the Shadow of Nesmic. So one more thing that we have to consider with this ultralight hunting base camp is, unlike ultralight hikers, we have to have things to process firewood if we're going to have a fire. Yes, I'm going to cook with a cook stove some of the time, but there's always going to be times that you're going to want that campfire for ambience, for warmth, for just sitting around and drinking a nice cup of coffee or cooking some game over the fire that you have taken while you are out hunting. And so I've got to carry implements to process firewood, saw, axe, knife, 
if not all three, at least two of the three. Those are going to add weight to the pack as well. So all of these things to me are very interesting and how I go about adding them is going to be very interesting over time as well. And this will be the first video in that series. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything that you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video in this series as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.